Okay, so slightly unrelated, but I had ice cream first time ever in the cinema apparently whilst watching this. Turns out eating ice cream in the dark is surprisingly difficult. I suck at putting spoon to mouth when I can't see. If a young girl who goes through a difficult experience begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who've been left behind as their real life friends have grown up. Yeah, that summary pretty much covers it. It's a family movie directed by John Krasinski, which is a massive left turn from his last couple of films. And its aim is to try be this wonder filled, easy time with some laughs and very on the nose messaging. I wanted to say that I loved this, but I can only really go as far as saying I just liked it. But it just misses the beat a little too much for me to be able to say that. It does get a lot right, but there are some crucial things I wish could be improved on. The whole mission of this film is to be magical, filled with imaginative new people and ideas with this buddy up adventure with Ryan Reynolds and it kind of does that? The big issue mentioning is well the imagination of it, or more technical terms the design. It's our imaginary friends, things kids would dream up with their crazy thoughts and the ifs are just well not that interesting. <laughs> They weren't honestly what was selling this for me. It was more the chemistry between our human characters. Some did work and played for great gags, which got me laughing a couple of times, like one that's just a class of ice voiced by Bradley Cooper. But a lot of them just felt so generic and vague, and it just felt like a really big wasted opportunity to go crazy with the ideas. That said though, if is certainly one thing, and that is charming as heck. Kaylee Fleming and Ryan Reynolds team up together to try and find new homes for these ifs and that partnership and core cool story was the strength of the movie. I think it starts off a little rocky and it's certainly not a groundbreaking story but it follows this calming routine in which the movie gradually builds you into this sense of relaxation. The first half of the film wasn't really selling me but the latter half includes some really good heartfelt moments which just lays on that charm and that wholesomeness that the movie was trying to be about. It leaves you with a nice taste in your mouth by the end of it. Kaylee Fleming plays our main child and I don't think she's given much to work on if I'm honest. She's mainly there to stoically walk from one place to another whilst the animation just goes on around her. At first I think she struggled to bounce off of her co-stars but I think it's because she's shoehorned into being this moody teenager stereotype so not really her fault. But then as we get towards the final act there's a couple of key emotional moments which I think she does a really solid job on and once she's been written to be a bit more easygoing, she begins to show her strengths better. The same also goes for Ryan Reynolds. First being this grumpy sidekick who just thinks nothing will work and there's a a few quips that land but until his character loosens up towards the middle of the movie he felt like he was just going through these generic motions. I will say that humour is surprisingly not the greatest asset of the film which you think with the cast it would be. As mentioned there's a few gags that land, one including an invisible friend named Keith which I liked but most feel like they would just landed better if they were in a more inspiring environment. You might find more humour out of trying to guess the actors which are voicing each of the characters but it is that charm, it's that charm that keeps being piled on which slowly gets Gets you to wind down until you get into the moments which are meant to pull on those heartstrings and do so pretty effectively. The animation is also fine, it can look out of place but I think it helps when the intention is for them to be so unrealistic. Steve Carell and Phoebe Waller-Bridge are some of the voice actors of note here and like I said they're fine but not really the winning point of the movie. The other huge win actually I want to talk about was the music, oh my god. Composer Michael Giacchino does an insane job with the soundtrack here and I think massively helps to sell you on those scenes that would have otherwise felt pretty flat. Might have been just me, but it reminded me of those old school Home Alone John Williams vibes. Really can't give it enough credit for pushing this film over the line for me. Okay, I think I've rambled enough. To reiterate, I liked it, but I just didn't love it. And I do, however, think it's a very safe, easy film to take a family to watch. After all, that's what it was basically designed for. It is quite a long film though. It's like an hour and 45. I do think you could shave off like 15 minutes of that easily. I think because of that, some young, young kids will get pretty bored of this at times. But yeah, one I recommend for family outings. Otherwise, I think you'll be fine. So that's if it came out on the weekend just gone, so maybe you've already seen it. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime, and video games. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye bye.